and just do this for 45 minutes. If you're doing steady state, that's what I do. Do this. After 20 minutes, your brain is just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Fitness should be a positive thing. There's no two ways about it when you approach the gym, when you approach a run, when you approach boxing, when you're about to climb a mountain and get to the top of Everest and look down and go, ha ha, then try and get back down without anything bad happening to you because climbing Everest is really terrifying. You need to have a good will inside of you and you need to be focused and you need to be dedicated. But the thing is, sometimes you're going to encounter negative things and no one ever talks about this. The, the most of the stuff you get online is either fitness man that lies, and we talked about it before, goes, I can get you abs in eight seconds. And he draws abs on you. You're like, I paid you $1,000. And then he runs off, and you can't catch him because you're too sad. Or you just get really good fitness advice, and that's great. But sometimes there needs to be a middle ground. And also, there's so much nonsense out there, we need to throw that out the window too. So that's what we're going to do today. Because some things nobody will ever tell you about getting in shape or bodybuilding or fitness or building muscle or whatever. Because if they tell you, they think you're going to go, oh, well, I don't want to do it. And then they won't give you the money. You see? But I don't need any money for you. I just need views, which is some kind of crazy currency in 2020. So here are those 10 things. Number 10 is that when you want to lose fat and get ripped and jacked, it sucks. Of course it sucks. doesn't mean that I love going to the gym, right? The reason I can stay so motivated most of the time is because I love going to the gym. I think it's the best thing ever. And I always use this analogy. If you're well into roller coasters and I say, oh, let's go to Disney World. You don't go, oh, I don't really want to go. You're like, oh, sweet Disney World. I'm going to ride the corkscrew maniac swizzle sticks. I don't know any theme park rides. So it's really, really easy. But that doesn't mean everything around it can't absolutely suck. Like when you start to cut and get ripped or whatever, and you enter a calorie deficit, you've got to eat less food, and we all like eating, let's face it. Um, you know, you, you, you can't do the things that you want to do. You've got to be really, really dedicated and blah, blah, blah. That's not fun. Like, it can be fun, but at some days you're going to wake up and be like, man, this is just not fun. This is not fun. And you'll see someone, especially on a hot day to, like today, you'll see someone eating an ice cream and you'll want to headbutt them because they're eating an ice cream without a care in the world. Now, six to eight weeks down the line, when you start seeing cuts and you start seeing progress and you're evolving, yada, 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 it makes it much easier. But in those first few weeks, we have to go through that transition stage. I can't really talk, but it's like when you grow your hair. I did grow my hair once when I was able to before Mother Nature kicked my ass. But when you're able to grow your hair and it goes from short to long, there's this middle bit where you're just like a beetle. You're like Paul McCartney and everyone just stares at you like you're in the wrong decade. That's what it's like when you're trying to get ripped. You have to go through that middle bit where you don't look big and you don't look cut. So you're just this guy and people will comment on it and go, well, you don't go to the gym anymore. And you're like, I will throw you in the lake, you mother Hubbard. It's true. It just happens. But that's when your mind's got to kick in and you just got to fight on through. Number nine is you've got to do cardio. Nobody wants to do cardio. Like it's okay if you are doing like boxing or MMA. That can be really fun. But a lot of bodybuilding muscle programs say, get on a stepper, especially at the moment, we can't do anything. Get on a stepper, get on a treadmill, you know, whatever works for you, um, cross trainer, and just do this for 45 minutes. If you're doing steady state, that's what I do. Do this. After 20 minutes, your brain is just like, I don't want to do this anymore. There are a thousand that we could watch TV, we could play games, we could play cards, we could learn an instrument, and you want to do this. That's what you're doing. Think about when you're in a deathbed. What did you do? Let's say you do an hour of cardio a week, right? You do an hour, seven hours, seven hours, 28 hours a month. That's a lot of damn hours when you get to your deathbed and you work it all out and you decided to spend your precious life doing this. It's worth it, but it doesn't mean it's entertaining. And number eight is your brain will fight you at first. It will. The brain loves routine. And it loves getting into doing you know, repetitive things day after day. And that's why a lot of people eat bad food without even realizing it. Or they drink too much alcohol. Because you get to a point where you think, I need this. I need this in my life when you actually don't. I think they say to break a routine, it takes about two to three weeks. Everyone's going to be different. But that is so hard. Like, Even if it's just you have, I don't know, a protein bar at the end of the day, with some kind of like healthy yogurt, like Greek yogurt. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things that I would do. It's even small. If you really like that meal and you think, oh, well, I can remove the protein bar because I'm starting to, to drop calories. When you sit down to have your protein yogurt or whatever, you're going to be like, this is just not as nice as it was. It's not as nice. And your brain will start saying, you know, have the protein bar, have the protein bar, have the protein bar, have the protein bar, have the protein bar. It's like that Simpsons episode, was it? Uh, I can't remember. I'll find the clip that I'll put it in. Can we have a pool, Dad? Can we have a pool, Dad? It's difficult. It's so difficult. Your brain will just fight, fight, fight until it knows what you're doing. And even then, when it does know what you're doing, when you introduce some of these sweet cheats, it just goes crazy. We did a video about that too. I'll try and remember to link it. 
You have to, you just have to stay the course. You have to stay the course and staying the course and being dedicated and being hard headed and all of those things are absolutely difficult. But nobody will tell that to you because they want you to think that you can just transform into Arnold Schwarzenegger tomorrow, if only. Number seven, mentioned it briefly, we'll double down on it here. Some internet people and some fitness people will lie to you. They will lie to you. That sucks. You want to get in shape, and here comes flipping Judas to try, to try and to try and trick you and tell you things that you want to hear. That doesn't help anybody because while you'll be all excited at first, when you aren't two percent body fat in eight days, you're going to start asking questions, and they're not going to have a good enough answer for you. Nobody got right ripped. In, in eight days, unless you're just trying to burn off as much body fat as possible. But if that is the case, you lose all your muscle, you're still going to be disappointed. And it's not your fault you get brought in by, uh, you get dragged in by this or tricked by this, whatever the right word is. That's how we educate themselves. So, I mean, who hasn't lost a certain amount of money on something and then you kind of spin it in your head? You're like, well, now I'll just pretend that was an investment so I never do that thing again. I've done it, you've done it, Auntie Jo has done it. Don't have an Auntie Jo, but she's definitely done it. But it's still not fun at the time, and there's so much information on the internet. How the hell are you supposed to swim through it all? So you've got to be a bit vigilant. You've got to kind of, you know, keep on it. You've got to try and get the good information and get rid of the bad information, and ultimately find what works for you. Number six is the overselling of supplements. I don't mean it literally. I mean it figuratively. Once more, you, you'll get this idea. Well, I don't have. If I don't have a testosterone booster, or I don't take creatine, or I don't take a multivitamin, or omega threes, or Whatever, you pick your pill, I can't get to where I gotta go, so now I gotta find all this money to do that. Look, some pills, are, any pill that you take or any supplement that you take over the counter is only going to get you so f a little bit extra. That's why you should take it, because sometimes even having that 1%, 2% increase will allow you to get you to your goal that teeny bit easier, and teeny is okay. But you could take none of this, and it would be okay. You can still get in shape. But there's this idea that unless I'm on all this stuff, you don't get, it's not true. You have to keep it basic. I'm not talking about um, PEDs or anything like that. I don't know anything about that. I don't. I, it's not my bag at all, even though the comments tell me otherwise all the time. But don't think that that's what you need. And don't start sacrificing cardio or eating well because you're taking a testosterone booster. I hate testosterone boosters, by the way. It's always about the basic things. It's always about weights, cardio, and diet. Anything else you want to bring in there because you think it helps you, that's great. But don't think that it be all and end all. And we just kind of mentioned this. Number five, nobody talks to you about hormones. Nobody. The only hormone you ever get thrown at you when it comes to bodybuilding is testosterone. Ah, oh, testosterone this, testosterone that. You can get too much testosterone sometimes. You can. And also, as you're going through all of this stuff, your hormones are going to fluctuate. Because when you enter into a calorie deficit, that's just what happens. That's what your body does. So one day, you may wake up and be ravenous. And maybe it's because your estrogen is too high. Maybe your estrogen's too low. You don't know. Maybe it's something to do with cortisol levels. There are thousands. Well, maybe not thousands. But there are hundreds of hormones in your body that control appetite, hunger, bloating. That always sucks, right? When you wake up and you're bloated, you're like, what did I do? What the hell happened? Happened. It's something that you, I don't think you need to educate yourself about it massively, but just read up about them. But don't do the other thing either. And don't blame everything on hormones. Ah, oh, my estrogen is too high because that's like menopausal stuff. When a woman's estrogen is too high, she will bloat. But don't then just go, ah, oh, it's, it's the estrogen. It's probably not. It's probably just because you're eating too much. But it would just be nice if they were talked about more. Number four is your non gym friends will think you're weird. They will think you're weird. They're like, well, why doesn't he want to come out with us? I mean, social distancing at the moment. But why doesn't he want to come out with us and have some food? Why is he bringing his own food with him? Why is he so upset? Blah, blah, blah. That's what they do, right? They don't get it. And they don't have to get it. And some of your friends will be supportive, of course. But there's always one friend that's not. And that's going to make it hard because it's a bit like peer pressure. It's like a bit like being back in school. It's like, why can't I just live my life? Why can't I just do my own thing? And it's because they don't get it. And it's also probably because you make them... Uh, look sort of inside themselves and they start thinking well if they can do it why can't I and they don't want to so that creates a problem in their own brain but it's something you have to put up with and like I've said with everything else here nobody will tell you and it sucks number three if you have a crazy goal say you're going for a bodybuilding competition that is 24 hours a day seven days a week that is dedication up the two nine I guess this ties into what we talked about earlier but you've got to throw yourself into that you've got to sacrifice things and you won't want to sacrifice those things because that's what the word sacrifice means and you have to be prepared for that. I think I'm talking about the mental game here, the mental challenge. Uh, loads of people talk about the physical challenge and the nutrition challenge and whatever else goes in. But the mental game is the hardest one of all. Like, I swear, I promise you, if you have the best you know, mental attitude towards this, you will breeze it. You just will. 
but you don't beat yourself up if you don't either. You just need to know when you go into this stuff and you're going for a proper hardcore goal, it's going to sap all your energy. It's going to sap all your time. You'll get something out at the end and you'll feel great for it and you'll feel rewarded and you should absolutely pat yourself on the back. But wouldn't it be nice if somebody told you that before you began on any walk of life? By the way, this may be quite hard. Number two is you got to do lunges. You do. If you want good legs, you got to do lunges. And I tell you this, lunges are the worst exercise in the history of man. I would rather punt a crocodile. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that was like cute, but not offensive. I couldn't do it. Lunges suck. Lunges suck. And the worst thing about lunges, when you start doing them, your legs start growing. And you're like, oh, for pity's sake. So lunges, just lunges. And number one, somebody out there, just one person will do half the work that you do and look twice as good. It could be because of genetics. It could be because of other things that they're doing that you don't want to do. It doesn't matter. You think that's nice? You think that's going to put a smile on your face? No, it's not. Because again, it's how the human brain works. You're going to be a little bit jealous, a little bit envious, because you want to do half the work. I used to know a guy, a little story, used to live with him uh, in university, and my diet was better than his. And I, I worked harder. I cared about it more. He was leaner than I was because his body just stayed lean and he would eat pizza and cheesecake and he'd always be lean. And I'm like, I will take you out to the dishes, my friend. You just got to accept it. You got to focus on you. The biggest takeaway uh, from bodybuilding, fitness, whatever you want to call it, focus on you. You are your own competition. The mirror is your best friend and your enemy. Do not worry about anybody else, even though it's super hard. There you go. That's 10 things no one ever tell you about fitness. And they're things that suck, but they're things that you'll take on. And there will things that will make you a stronger person down the line. Like the video, share the video, hit the subscribe button, smash that bell button so you know when more videos are going up. Got a Patreon, patreon.com for us at Summer 316. It's like a shop. You get certain stuff. There's a link in the description. Check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the week.